Today we are going on board on the old Osterreich ring. You know it probably as the Red Bull ring. Are you ready? Let's go! Hello and welcome to this video. Today we are going for the Osterreich ring on board. Originally built in 1969, the Osterreich ring track was a spectacular, scenic and unique circuit in Europe. The track was very fast and every corner was a fast sweeper and was taken in no lower than third gear in a 5-speed gearbox. It had noticeable changes in elevation during the course of a lap, 65 meters from the lowest to the highest point. Like most fast circuits, it was hard on engines, but more difficult on tires because of the speeds being so consistently high. Many consider the Osterreich ring to be dangerous, especially the Bosch curve, a 180 degree downhill right-hander corner with almost no runoff area. There were other testing corners, such the first one, which was a flat-out right-hander that was essential corner to get right because of the long straight afterwards that led to the Bosch curve. Some of the truck was just road with little to no protection at all, even to the final Austrian Grand Prix there in 1987. In practice, for the 1987 race, Stefan Johansen collided with a deer that made its way onto the track while the driver was cresting a blind brow before the last corner. Increasing speeds were a concern at the Osterreich ring. It did compete with Silverstone for the title of fastest track in Europe and in the F1 calendar. American driver Mark Donahue died after crashing in the first corner in 1975, so in 1976 it was tightened and made into one right-hander rather than the two apex right-handers that existed originally. In 1977 it was slowed down and became the hellish chicane, going from the fastest corner to the slowest corner on the track. Niki Lada is the only Austrian to win his home Grand Prix. Alan Prost often said that all tracks can be changed, but not this one. Just adding runoff areas would be fine. It was an amazing track and nobody can forget the crazy crash in 1985. Oh, De Cesaris a major accident! And I think he's, he's all right, he's getting out. Andrea de Cesare is getting out of the wrecked remains of the Ligier Renault number 25. He got it on the grass and completely cartwheeled. He's walking up the bank and miraculously he looks completely unhurt. He's just surveying the scene. Off comes the crash helmet. Yes, and to the relief of the crowd, Cheers and applause for him. He's walking back to the pits, dirty. Later, Hermann Tilke destroyed the track, making it a lot shorter, and his layout didn't leave any original corners. So let's go on board. We start in 1976. This is a 8mm film. So it has no sound, so I will be commentating on this one. I love that Mercedes logo on the left. And this is the first corner. Watch that it has been repaired. So it was after Mark Donahue's accident. And now is a long straight. The track, remember, does not have almost any runoff areas. And it was a high speed track. So, many people consider it dangerous. Now, we are arriving the Bosch curve that we don't have any opportunity to see. This is where the Cesare is crashed. Also, we don't have any chance to see. And then this 
small chicken that lead us to the final corner, the Jochen Rind corner. This is where Stefan Johansson met a deer, so a crazy thought. This is the Jochen Rind corner, it does not exist anymore and I really loved it. And we are going now for the start finish straight. And into the pit lane. Some cars here and a racing car here in the end. di cui dispone. Intanto queste immagini sono state girate dal pilota austriaco Hans Binder con un filmato che la televisione vi ripropone. Osservate la chicane che ha sostituito la velocissima curva dopo il traguardo. In questo punto la velocità eh, è di circa 120 all'ora, si esce, si sale, dunque si fa quella chicane in, ter in seconda, poi in terza, quarta, qui siamo a circa 260 all'ora per poi rallentare e affrontare la curva Sebring, come vedete nelle immagini, in quarta a circa 190 all'ora. Ecco questa è la curva Sebring, 190 all'ora in quarta. Adesso si comincia a salire, ma qui si mette la quinta, avete visto il pilota che ha cambiato, la velocità sale a 275-280, in quinta o in sesta, seconda che il cambio sia a 5-6 marce, dopodiché il pilota affronta la curva Bosch, dove ieri Vittorio Brambilla per un bloccaggio dei freni ebbe un testa coda piuttosto volento. Questa curva Bosch si percorre in terza a circa 160 all'ora. Ecco questa curva Bosch, stamattina l'acqua scorreva a fiumi in questa curva in discesa, quindi quarta per affrontare a 170 all'ora quella che viene chiamata la chicane Texaco, che si, si affronta a circa 170 e, e si continua a dosare acceleratore e sterzo perché è praticamente una successione di due curve. Questa è la prima, qui si mette la quarta si esce e si comincia ad accelerare ulteriormente per salire a circa 200 all'ora, si mette la quinta, l'avete visto poco fa e si va verso la curva Rint, 
Vista che è la curva che poi mette nella zona del traguardo anche qui la velocità sale oltre i 240 la curva rinta si affronta in quarta a circa 200 all'ora per poi uscirne a 240 mettere la quinta o la sesta e affrontare il rettilineo per riportarsi poi alla chicane complessivamente il circuito misura con la giunta della chicane 5.942 metri e 48 centimetri contro i 5.909 in the car, nice shot from on the roll over bar, cameraman on the bar, he's just gone through the chicane which was put in on the track to slow the cars down on the very quick loop that used to be taken flat out at about 180, it's all long sweeping straights, this is all flat out straight now, he's uh, up to f full speed, the turbos are getting over 180 miles an hour down here with their super powerful engines, the Cosworth engine car, this McLaren that Marlboro McLaren, Nicky Lauder's driving very quick. This corner nowadays is almost flat out. They turn here to right-hander, take and just knock it down a gear, swinging out wide. Now we go over a little brow. It's blind to the driver. It was blind to you, as you see. Down another long straight, coming on to possibly the fastest point on the circuit. Now the road starts to run downhill a bit. Their cars get a bit of a slipstream here. They'll be looking to slipstream, and then it, the, the road turns slightly left and then into... The Bosch curve, which is a downhill sweeping right-hander, very, very difficult entrance. Here we go. He's break, on the brakes now, tur turning into the corner, sweeping down the hill. This corner is governed by how well you get into it. From now on, it's all flat out, car swinging out wide. Car goes very heavy on the suspension here and very heavy on the steering. See him just knocking it up a gear there into fourth gear. And then the two very tricky left-handers. The car goes very light over the brow of this hill. They're still doing something like uh, 140, 150 miles an hour. Short straight and down to the next left-hand corner. Again, quick and wide. And he get, when the car swings out wide, then he's got to get sharply back over the road. As we go up to the brow here and turn right, he turns into the corner on the apex uh, of the brow. Down into the dip. Up again over another blind brow. He goes and then down to the last corner on the lap. Medium speed right-hander. Well, I say medium speed, still about 120 miles an hour, 130. The Jochen Rindt curve, named after the greatest Austrian driver, or the great Austrian driver. Hard to say that he's the greatest against uh, success that Nicky's had. And that's the completion of one lap. You saw the start-finish line. Flash. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Subscribe for more videos like this and comment if you have something to say or ask. I see you in the next video. Take care.